So this is Peter, and I'm going to share our journey with Kafka and ClickHouse. When you watch the first presentation, Sentry was sharing their scale. We quite don't have that scale, so everything I say, please put in, in perspective of that. So this is basically going to be a journey of a data ingestion from Kafka to ClickHouse. Um, so I'm a co-founder of OpenMeter. We do usage collection and aggregation for billing and cost analysis use cases. My background is pretty much observability and infrastructure. I used to work on Netflix serverless platform. And at Stripe, I was doing uh, lots of like cost efficiency around databases and working a lot with finance around that. That was actually giving the idea for OpenMeter, which I will cover a little bit later. So the accent is uh, unusual because it's Hungarian. We're a tiny country, especially not many of us in Hungary. I mean, sorry, in the United States. So, um, uh, it's probably unusual a little bit. And you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever is the current name of the platform, as slash Peter. So why is metering challenging? Uh, so metering is this really kind of um, subset of observability, or at least that's how I think about that. It needs to be accurate because it's used for billing purposes. This is kind of a big differentiator from traditional API metrics, which uh, you can have interpolations, you can have sampling, and you have scraping intervals, which can make the counter uh, kind of inaccurate for billing that's uh, not really accepted, and you also want to dedupe your data. So that's one important characteristic for this talk. Uh, you also need to have historical data much longer than your usual observability data because it's used for billing, sales, and kind of cost analysis people. Um, so you want to keep it for many, many years, ideally. It needs to be scalable for the new use cases, like all these kind of, you know, when you charge based on number of API calls, number of tokens for LLMs, like you need to be able to ingest at scale. Uh, and the aggregates need to be instant, ideally. That's kind of important if you build a customer dashboard. So when you use a usage-based product, you want to see immediately how much you consume as a customer. You don't want to figure out like 24 hours, two hours later, if you do a software bug and it makes a huge bill. Uh, and on the collection side, this is not unique to, to usage metering, but the data can come from various sources. For certain infrastructure pieces, you may need to Pause logs. In other cases, you can uh, use much clearer integration points. But to kind of loosen the requirements, there is one good thing about metering. It doesn't need to be very fine-grained, the data that you collect, the aggregates. So like, if you aggregate the data in like tumbling windows, in many cases, even one minute is like kind of enough for like a billing use case. Uh, but it's almost never required to be like uh, more granular than second. So that's kind of a good requirement when you need to do the aggregates. Um, so just super quickly how OpenMeter works, and then we zoom into the Kafka part. Uh, I don't think anything is surprising on this slide. It's a very traditional, everything goes into an API server that puts the data into Kafka topics, uh, which is partitioned by the customer's customer. And then we do the deduplication, and then we sync the data into ClickHouse. And now let's zoom into that very specific piece. Because I mentioned one side we have Kafka, another side we have ClickHouse. But we need to do a couple of things between, which is we need to do the deduplication. We also need to batch up the data. Probably if you work with ClickHouse, then you know that ClickHouse likes if you ingest data in the bigger batches less frequently. So that's something we want to achieve. And then obviously, we need to insert into ClickHouse. Um, it's basically how we ingest the data that every account, so basically our customers, has a specific Kafka topic, and those Kafka topics are partitioned by their customers, so customers of customers. So that's how we are scaling Kafka. That's important of the context of this talk because it means we will have many, many Kafka partitions that all need to kind of funnel back into when we save it into ClickHouse. Um, so we do the batch inserts, what I mentioned, and for deduplication right now we use Redis that's not going to scale with us. We need to switch into some kind of bloom filters because we are going to run out of the key space, uh, but that's what we do now. And we use the aggregating tumbling windows. We use materialized views for that with the aggregating merge tree. Um, so everything goes into the row events table and then per meter we have kind of a, a materialized view. Um, I heard, I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with materialized views with ClickHouse, but they are trigger-based, so they updated when you insert the data. Uh, so kind of that's something that to keep in mind. 
So this is not how it started the architecture with the, the greatness of ClickHouse and everything what we love here. We started with a much uh, different architecture. We were using KCQL DB, which is like a streaming database that kind of reads from a Kafka topic and writes to a Kafka topic. I know that Apache Flink is kind of a more modern version for that. We started with KCQL DB, simply we didn't have experience with this space that time. Um, then we were aggregating in kind of tumbling windows and then we syncing the pre-aggregates into Postgres. So this approach wasn't scaling very well and it was very expensive, mainly because KCQL DB doesn't really have clusterization and has very strong limits that how many aggregations you can do in one node. So kind of we had to both do the manually the sharding and we also were running out pretty quickly how much one instance can handle, so we had to run many of them. This is a problem for us because we support lots of many smaller startups that doesn't have a very high frequent event, so kind of wasn't feasible from economical perspective for us to run that many KCQL instances just because we support these smaller companies. Um, so this is what we moved away, and kind of the first iteration on that was that we brought in ClickHouse and we moved the aggregation with kind of using Matarazad views. Um, we started to use Kafka Connect. Um, Kafka Connect is basically this very robust framework to move data in and out of ClickHouse. I mean, not sorry, any kind of Kafka system. And what's really great that ClickHouse has this official Kafka connector um, that you can use to sync data from Kafka to ClickHouse. This was working really great. Um, we had a couple of challenges with this that um, we are getting data from customers that we can't really validate and the ingestion part, it would be too expensive. And if we don't validate them, they can make a ClickHouse insert to fail. So we were failing pretty big batches and uh, it was really challenging to kind of sort them out. We also had to move out of deduplication from the kind of the ingestion, the, the consumer, which was leading from some inconsistencies. So we were pretty happy with the performance of this approach, but we were lacking some kind of validation and consistency. Um, and uh, there was another challenge around this, that we were using uh, Confluent and they not allow you as of today to update the binaries of a Kafka Connect plugin with the same group ID. So kind of you can, can continue your Kafka consumption from the same offset and that was obviously, again, challenging from uh, updating binaries and consistency perspective. So next step was which they don't recommend you usually to implement your own Kafka Connects. I remember when I first heard about Kafka Connector, I listened to this podcast from the creator of Kafka Connect, and the person only said like 10 times not to implement your own Kafka Connect. Um, so I was a little bit hesitant to go into this journey, but obviously we did it. Um, so now we have uh, our consumers implemented in Go, um, and what it gives us is we have a much more consistent deduplication, so we are doing it part of the kind of when we are syncing the data and consuming. Um, we currently consume Kafka topics per partitions, which is the customer's customer, so like deduplication only can happen in customer's customer's data, so that's something that relatively straightforward to handle for us. Uh, we also do the event validation, so like we are not failing any more huge batches, so we don't have that issue around that. And um, we also basically here funnel back the data into a single Kafka insert, sorry, ClickHouse insert, and that way we can, uh, we can have a much more scalable kind of ingestion. Um, the other kind of side effect of doing this in Go that um, just we are a Go shop, so we are much more familiar with that. It's much more pleasant experience to run on your own local computer than running huge kind of Java projects in Docker. And we could also build a better observability. We even have a custom tracing with open tracing that kind of covers how we sync the data. And it's just much easier to maintain that way. Obviously, there's a reason why that podcast was saying not to re-implement Kafka Connect. Like uh, exactly once delivery is really hard problem. Um, if you if you, especially if you want to kind of have high availability and high performance, then very likely you need to give up something around implementing exactly once delivery. Um, so in our use case, we could cover lots of edge cases, but uh, there are some weird situations when we still need to do manual reconciliation. And um, currently to balance out the consumption around Kafka, we use the default um, kind of balancing strategy. I'm pretty sure at some point we have to change that. That's good enough for us now. Uh, and 
yeah, everything is open source. So if you want to look things how we, how we do it, and, uh, then please do, and please let me know what we should do differently. And uh, yeah, this is just basically, this is the default partition strategy of Kafka, but you can see here is, for some people who are not familiar with Kafka, it's basically you have topics, you can almost think about like queues, and one topic can be backed by multiple partitions, and partition is kind of the smallest granularity in my understanding that you can scale Kafka. So you can assign one node basically to one partition. And on the other side, this is our Go consumers, where you can do the same. Basically, the smallest granularity, how we can scale the system, is that one Kafka node per partition and one Go consumer. And then we have to go vertical scaling for now. That's what I wanted to share today. Um, so this was our journey with uh, Kafka and ClickHouse so far, and I'm pretty sure it's going to evolve in the upcoming months. And I have a big ask. We are launching on Product Hunt in four hours, basically, at midnight. Uh, so it would be a mean the world to us if you uh, check the QR code or openmeter.io.ph and you subscribe to our launch. Uh, that would be a huge help. Uh, thank you.